Hi guys, this is Allison from Alley Cat Creations. How are you? I don't know what to say. I'm done. Bad day today, mentally. Um, I'm just very tired and everything I've been looking at is going off the market really quick. And yeah, just letting everything try to go over my shoulders. And you know, what I'm trying to manifest is not working out. So I'm not giving up, but doing it all alone. over it. Anywho, please share and like because it's caring and sharing is caring and liking is also caring. It's also compassionate. Subscribe if you haven't done so already. And if you get anything from my work, an epiphany, a mic drop, a connect the dot, a new book to read, Please consider supporting my work, supporting me, helping me out in this time of need and despair. That's reality. That's not asking for pity. I don't want it. The key of destiny. Cat hairs. I also have a fan on, by the way. Um, it started getting very humid here again. It was quite pleasant. I got a lot of things moved, a lot of boxes done, but I still feel like nothing looks like it got anywhere. Just a cluster of shit everywhere. Fun, fun times. My favorite number, the 17th letter of the alphabet, 17. I'm reading from the Key of Destiny. It's quite lengthy. I might cut this in two videos. We'll see how I do. Only because my teeth are loose and annoying me. But there's nothing I can do about that. For a long time. Number 17, the disposing intelligence. Quote, the 17th path is the disposing intelligence, which provides faith to the righteous, and they are clothed with the Holy Spirit by it. And it is called the foundation of excellence and the state of higher things. Sefer Yitzraya. In the above quotation, we find the mystical meaning of number 17, namely the disposing intelligence, which provides faith to the righteous. This indeed expresses the full meaning of 17, for only the righteous or those who are not only on the right path, but who have been able to manifest this dispos disposing intelligence, even in the little things of life, can have the faith which... Jesus, referred to when said, If ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Different times. A disposing intelligence formulates an intellectual conception of truth which then has to be weighed, tested, and freed from all error. It must prove that from the heart alone can come the foundation of excellence. Hence, one who has thus intellectually sipped all knowledge and disposed of all that stands in the way of revealed truth is clothed with the Holy Ghost. 
This is the overshadowing of Holy Spirit of which Jesus said, even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but yet ye know him for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. And again, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Truth. The formulation of 17, 10 plus 7 equals 17 equal 8 shows that it is an important step in evolution, eight being the number of evolution. In number seven, we saw the perfection of the sevenfold Elohim, which had created man in their image. And started him out on his triumphal journey through the cycle of necessity, armed as a warrior to go forth to victory. Oh boy. In 17, we see the 10 or completion added to perfection. Thus, 10 plus 7 is 17. In 7, we saw the soul resting on its Sabbath day. Er, it essayed its journey. The soul in the seventh day is looked upon by the Lord, is pronounced very good. Hence, we might say that 7 marks the perfect soul as God made it unsullied by contact with its garment of flesh while 17 is that same soul when it has completed the cycle of 10 and gained the victory over the flesh having added a cycle of experience to its pristine purity pause this is what i've been talking about the last video I did with Dolores Cannon. Many of us already completed 3D challenges, tests to graduate into the higher realm. And now we're getting added a new slew of things that we're being tested on. Compassion and unconditional love is 4D. That's starting the new cycle. Just sticking that in there. The initiate has entered into his kingdom of flesh, has struggled with it and compelled it to obey his mandates. He has faced temptations felt the chill of the night of darkness doubts and fears and the thirst for power has and has made his choice his feet understanding has been washed in the blood of his heart hence he can now stand in the presence of the masters the blood of the heart which has bathed his feet is the spiritual life stream which flows through the heart rather than the head and has now bathed and washed clean his understanding of truth. However, 17 is but another rest house, although far up on the rugged mountainside. Here the pilgrim may abide for a night and listen to the wise discourse of the masters who have gone before. This is a most important step for here he must begin to recognize himself as a creator, a mighty fact, factor in the great army of the voice. Not only must he be accountable for the creative thoughts and words in himself, but he must be held responsible for their effect on his fellow men and whole part planet. Spirit is sinking here. Pause. Spirit sinking. Spoke about this with Dolores Cannon again. Two different books. Spirit is here with a message. 
plain and simple. The evolution of 17 as eight is not only the personal evolution of number eight already described, but it is the evolution of the race. Hence one who has reached this point must become an active factor in helping on this evolution. Pause again. Where is your role in this? You might have multiple roles. I know I have multiple, multiple roles to play out. And I just started, not really, but on many of my missions, I am not even begun yet. But I do it out of my heart with compassion. The Hermetic Principles applies to this book as well as others. Why? Because it cause and effect. You can talk all day long about how you're gonna do something. You think about it. You go through the steps in your mind. You, you put in a motion and an action plan, but it's your free will to actually act and put into motion the deed that you want to play out. And that is what is lacking right now. A lot of people chatter, a lot of people talk. A very big game. But they don't put the motion in their efforts and it goes nowhere and it's a waste of energy. Stop wasting your energy. If you're not going to do something for yourself or for others, Stop putting it into the ether and then walking away from it. And yes, things do happen. Things get sidetracked. Catastrophic shit does happen. That's not what I'm talking about. The very simple act of hitting a like button is doing that. That's, oh, I'm helping someone out. I'm not talking about myself. I'm talking about anybody. Ooh. It helps. Because more people get to see the video. Little things go a very far away. And it's putting your act into the ether, into the universe. And starting doing it on a daily basis. Doing something for another person on a daily basis and the very small act of hitting a like button for anybody that you come across, especially now in this time, helps. I'm just giving that one example. I can give a million. Back to the book. Here we must be consciously clothed with the Holy Ghost, not in a vague way, but as, re as a recognized force, a guide, a comforter on whom he can rely. He must also be in a definite relationship with those rulers in each kingdom whose duty it is to sound and express and pass on the creative word. In each kingdom, there are the rulers called by various names, Diane Cohans, Devas, etc. In regular orders, each with his special field of operation and each subject to a still higher intelligence above him, all obey in passing on the word the lower expression of these rulers, being nature spirits or natural elementals, while the highest are planetary rulers. When man reaches the step symbolized by 17, he comes into consciousness at one mint with this mighty army of workers and should take his place, realize and accept his responsibilities and work with the law towards the manifestation of divine perfection. For on the step symbolized by 17, man himself becomes a sort of rest house for the creative force. That is here man must consciously touch the higher intelligences and must stand as a distributor 
to the lower. Pause. Once again, we're in a spiritual war right now. This is why this book is extremely important. Extremely. There are people that are in the know and there's people not in the know and there's people who do their research very valiantly and diligently. And then there's people who siphon off of other people's energies and steal it. Who's to judge? Do your work. If you don't know what that is, that's okay. Trust me. I have done everything and failed. I have not succeeded in this life with anything in a career form. Nothing. Everything has fallen and slipped away from my, my arms. But you know what? I still get up and I still try. I'm putting my energy and my 100% in it because that's the Aries that I am. I don't give up. I'm a damn warrior. I'm a fire sign. Feisty. Realize the power that you have within you. Go for it. Whatever it is. But you're spreading your knowledge, which should be free, by the way, not behind a paywall. And yes, we all need to make money, but you know what? There's there's certain things that people are suffering. And those su people that are suffering are the ones that need the knowledge the most and are the ones that really can't pay for the knowledge. So those of you who are listening, and there's a lot of movements happening, and there's a lot of people asking for money, wonderful, and I'm glad that's how they're going to make their income, but guess what? There are people that now won't get the information or the knowledge because they chose to put greed in front of themselves and their knowledge. And yes... Certain things, yes, you should charge for. If you're doing a course and you're putting your 100% into that course, that's different. But if you're just reading other people's news stories, think again. He does this through the power of his own spiritualized will and the victory he has gained over his thoughts this function is calling, creating through the power of Praya Shakti, not pronouncing that correctly, but it is what it's going to come out as, is the use of the imagination. To imagine a thing is to firmly create a mold of what you desire, perfect in all its details the will is then brought into action and form thereby transferred to the objective world this is creation by praya shakti while man can and must become an active participator either for good or evil in the evolution of the planet yet each kingdom is subject to the diane kohan ruling that kingdom the whole cosmos is guided controlled and animated by almost endless series of hierarchies of sentient beings having a mission to perform and who whether we give them one name or another whether we call them diane cohans or angels or our messengers in the sense only that they are the agents of karmic and cosmic laws for instance all animals of the one species are subject to the group soul diane cohan of that species, yet each group's soul owes obedience to the planetary ruler of that hierarchy from which it emanated. Mm -hmm. While each of the lower kingdoms has its rulers, nature spirits, etc., yet the influence of the ruler of the hierarchy is supreme. 
The kingdom can only evolve through obedience to the laws governing the hierarchy to which they belong. Each human soul also belongs to a certain planetary hierarchy, which gives him his dominant characteristics, yet in the course of his pilgrimage through matter, he will be born under all the various planetary conditions. In fact, ere he becomes the victor over planetary influences, he must have passed through all the 12 houses and master in the influences of all 12 signs. No matter how many hundreds of incarnations this may require. My poor soul. With how many lives I've lived. Simultaneously, though, fractalized in another body as well. So I must have failed in five cycles of Earth. Or I am volunteering, like a dumbass that I am, to be the freaking light bearer of my area, which will now be changing because I can't be in New York anymore. But think about where you fit into that equation. In, in tarot, in astrology, you have your birth chart, your natal chart, and then you have different times and angles and degrees of where everything moves in your chart. So when you were born, you have a time and that time aligns with where, you know, for me, example, where Aries is and that's my sun sign and where am I a Virgo ascending sign and where's my moon sign in Gemini. And then I have some Taurus placements. I have Sagittarius. I have all different types of placements with each planet and each planet. Aries is the first house, etc. through the twelve. It corresponds with tarot cards, of course. Everything corresponds with each other. And each house has different meanings. And you, you know, when the astrologers and, um, you know, people that do horoscopes, they say your, you know, the new moon in, in Leo, it's going to affect your 12th house in Capricorn. And you're like, what the fuck is that? This is what that is uh, trying to describe here. It's each house that you have to master all the elements. And each house has its own thing you have to master. And go through and experience. So just, just. A lot of people don't realize and understand those components when I am reading and they hit me like spirits like, hi, Allison, like people are probably not aware of what you're talking about. So just just be aware of that. In fact, he becomes the victor over planetary influences. He must have passed through all 12 houses and mastered influences of all 12 signs. Aries, Virgo, Libra, Pisces, etc. No matter how many hundreds of incarnations he may require. When the cycles have been completed, he shall then become one. Of the 144,000, 12 times 12 equals 144, our perfected master. And 1 plus 4 plus 4 equals 9, the number of the initiates who were the first to be sealed from all the tribes of the children of Israel, the 12 houses. Pause. So here we have another, the 144,000. It could be your DNA. It could be all these terms that people give 144,000. Again, in metaphysics, it's called perception. It's what you perceive it to be. It's what you resonate with in your heart. There is no de definite and defined answer there because it all rings true to each of us differently. I was told 
many moons ago that I have a seal across my forehead and I have a white cross behind me and I'm a part of the 144,000. Is that angels, archangels? Is it entities? Is it because my DNA? Is it because of this, that, and the other thing? I don't freaking know. Interesting, to say the least. As we have said in our lectures on Bible interpretation, to understand this 144,000, we must realize that each soul that is born is an emanation from one of the great spiritual beings which rule the universe called in our Bible the Elohim or the seven angels of the presence. Interesting. Which rule the signs of the zodiac. Each soul incarnates under a particular sign to learn the lessons which are the degree of manifestation of the particular force. After he has passed an in incarnation, in that sign, learning as much as he can, little by little, he incarnates in another sign with all the experiences he has gained. In the first sign built into the new body as inherent faculties and abilities. And so he goes on around the entire zodiac. I must have started at 12. Because I'm at one now. Hmm. Interesting. When he, become, when he comes back again to the first sign in which he started, he has added powers that has gained in... That means I probably am done. I'm done! Woo! -hoo! Passing through all the other signs and hence keen can take up the same lessons on a higher plane. Here we go. I'm starting four. And with the greater power to manifest the positive aspect of the forces of that sign. But note that I've lived 28,000 plus lives. So, Ooh. where the hell is my soul? Who knows? This must each soul pass around the zodiac and learn the lessons of the forces from each of the 12 signs. This will require at least 12 incarnations in each sign. Now I make a lot of sense. The 12 times 12 making in all 144. The thousands are simply the ciphers relating to certain mystic eras in his perfection. Therefore, those who were sealed out of the different tribes were those who had completed the 12-fold cycle, who had gained the power out of each sign 12 different times or in 12 different phases. They may have made 1,000 incarnations in one sign before they were able to conquer its characteristics, but symbolically, they must have passed through at least 12 times. Hence, those sealed out of 12 tribes means that out of every phase of humanity, there will be those who reach mastery and are able to seal with the seal of the Lord. This has a very particular help in your daily life. We hear so many people say, I was born under Libra or Capricorn or Scorpio, etc. And of course, I cannot conquer in this carnation in each sign. You cannot expect me to conquer. I am not responsible for my failure, and immediately there sets in a phase of discouragement. But we see that since you pass through every sign, it does not make any difference what sign you are in now. Mm -hmm. You can conquer if you look to the lamb. I'm in the lamb sign, too. If you use the power of the root of David... No matter what sign you are in, no matter what particular lesson you must learn, it is possible for you to conquer in that sign. After the 12,000 were sealed out each tribe, we find that the, there was a great company besides. Those who have been absolutely sealed have finished all the manifestations of the forces of the zodiac and have obtained mastery of the sun. But besides these, we find there are countless hosts 
And after these I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and peoples and kindreds and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes. Thousands of from every sign of the zodiac stood before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, with palms in their hands. These are they who obtain to a certain degree of mastery the mastery of one sign, and who recognize the necessity of leading the Christ life, and hence have donned their white robes and have palms in their hands. You will note that there were many circles around the throne. First the beasts, outside them the elders, outside them the 144,000, outside the great mass of humanity, no lost tribes, no lost souls, all mankind were there. If we were to take the literal construction or the ordinary understanding that there will be only 144 persons saved out of a millions on earth who have passed away, we will find it most unjust and preposterous idea. For the very next verse states that there were countless millions who stood around the throne showing that all humanity will ultimately, as they obtain, wear the white robes and stand around the throne, and there sing their songs or anthems to the Lamb. These are they who have washed their robes in the blood of the Lamb and who made them white. That is a horrible idea if taken literally. But if we were, rem if we were to remember that the symbology of the blood in all spiritual teachings is the spirit spiritual life force just as the physical blood renews the physical life force so the higher circulation carries the spiritual life force of the christ through all our bodies and it is only by washing our garments or allowing the christ force to permeate all our bodies that we can ultimately sit down around this throne When the new Jerusalem comes down from heaven, it is represented by having 12 gates and each gate, 12 angels stand 12 influences of the rulers of the hierarchies. As man gains the victory over or learns to correlate with and control these forces, he cooperates in the work of their hierarchies and penetrates deeper and deeper towards the center of being. His field of influence is constantly increased because he has etherealized and spiritualized his bodies, faculties, and powers so they can respond to these higher orders. Therefore, one of the great objections to astrology as generally practiced in the making of horoscopes is explained, for there are no two persons exactly alike. Two may be born at the same moment in the same place under the same planetary influences but each may belong to a separate hierarchy which colors with its own influence all conditions of his life. Again, one may be working through the particular sign for the seventh, eighth, or even twelfth time, while the other is in it for the first time. Thus, each will have a separate lesson to learn in different aspects of the forces in the sign to correlate with and to manifest although his astrological chart for each would be the same. Pause. That's the damn truth spoken right there. I don't care. Truth. And again, it also, I want to point this out. It doesn't matter what age you are. There are a lot of people older than me, and my soul is older than theirs. Age really doesn't hold too much in terms of this. You could be a newer soul. I incarnated from another world. And you're new to the human body, and all it's fun. So just take that into your comprehension there. But I resonate highly with this information. 
Among the Egyptians, number 17 was associated with one of their deepest and most mystical teachings, one which has never been properly apprehended by modern scholars, namely the myth of Osiris. Here we find Osiris as a sun god, number one, Isis the moon goddess, number seven, and Set the destroyer, who is none other than Saturn, number eight, the great initiator who induced Osiris to enter a coffin, which exactly fitted him, and who is identical with the serpent who persuaded Adam and Eve to fall into generation, or by clothed its clothes of skin, the physical body, which is a coffin, which just fits. After cutting the body of Osiris into many pieces, Adam and Eve becoming many people. He was drowned in the Nile, always a symbol of the river of physical life renewing itself yearly by the flood, which overflows its banks and brings forth vegetation. Isis is not only a symbol of nourishing principle of nature, but the great mother force, which nourishes and brings forth good and out of evil in mankind in all creation, the underlying power of divine love, which no matter how the perversity of human passions imprint in, hu in harmony and death upon the world is still ever working unseen, unrecognized, to cover up the scars of man's making, to renew life, to heal, uplift, and advance. It is this nourishing force which heals all wounds if they are kept clean and let alone. In short, Isis symbolized the divine motherhood in the Godhead. The Comforter, the Holy Ghost, is prominent in 17, which Jesus told his disciples should be with them always, even to the end of the world. It was this great mother principle with which Jesus identified himself when speaking of Jerusalem, a symbol of home of the earthly man. How often would I have gathered the children together, even as a hen gathered her chickens under her wings, and ye would not. Isis gathering the separated parts of the body of Osiris together has the same meaning, for some day the great mother, the comforter, will gather all the parts of this great body of humanity together under her wings, and we shall then become truly one with the sun god or that light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world what's happening right the fuck now you guessed it it's happening now now The number 17, the celestial hierarchies. Can't wait for this. Quote, the whole order of nature evinces a progressive march towards a higher life. There is a design in the action of the seemingly blindest forces. The whole process of evolution with its endless adaptions is a proof of this. And quote, the secret doctrine, Blavonsky, book one. What is a hierarchy? The word is made up of hieras, sacred and arco, to govern, and according to the standard dictionary means, a body of a classical rulers called angels, archangels, princedoms, powers, virtues, dominions, thrones, cherubim, seraphim, the last order being nearest the trinity. The planetary rulers of the hierarchies are the Elohim, a plural feminine word translated in the Bible, not in its true and specific meaning, but by the generic vague term God. That a plural meaning was intended is clearly evidenced in Genesis 1, 26 where we read, let us make man in our image and after our likeness. 
We thus see that the doctrine of hierarchies is not merely an oriental or heathen one, but is well recognized in Christian literature. In the language of mysticism, the true hierarchies refer to the seven sacred powers or entities, creative forces of the cosmos, which govern all the kingdoms of the macrocosm and which manifests in all the 12 divisions of the celestial zodiac. This can be roughly illustrated if we draw a zodiac with its 12 houses, the seven centric rings around the center of the space between any two adjacent concentric circles from center to circumference represents a hierarchy and indicates the field of action of many ruling forces, all, however, subject to the planetary ruler of the house in which a certain planet is said to have either its throne or its decline. Thus, we find planetary influences not only affecting man, but all the kingdoms. At the very center is what we call God, or the creative, the great creative intelligence ruler over all. Hence, it is quite right to say that God is within, since all evolution proceeds without outward. The universe is worked and guided from within outwards. As above, so it is below, as in heaven, so on earth, and man, the, the microcosm, a miniature copy of the macrocosm, is a living witness to the universal law, as no outward motion or change, when normal in man's external body, can take place unless provoked by an inward impulse, so with the external or manifested universe. God is also above, hence we are quite right in saying we look up to God, for man's place is on the circumference of the circle, with his head towards the center, hence he must look up to God, and also look within the center both of himself as the microcosm where God is reflected, and of the cosmos. Man's body might be called a hierarchy ruled over by his higher mind, yet every different organ or extremity has an independent ruler or center of consciousness, and every cell of the body is nucleus, which is its ruler. All, however, are subservient to the higher ruler, the divine ego, who in turn must be obedient to the infinite. This we see that a hierarchy would include man as its highest subdivision on the plane of our outer manifestation, yet it would pass through every kingdom of nature from center to circumference, and each kingdom manifests in each subdivision of the twelve houses, hence comes under the zodiacal influence of each sign, and also obeys the laws of its hierarchy. Since man stands at a point where he can hear the word of command and respond to the guidance of the higher ruler, he can pass the command and guidance down to the kingdoms below him, hence is capable of becoming a mighty factor toward enforcing obedience and bringing harmony and brotherhood throughout all the divisions of the hierarchy. Man being a compound of the essence of all the celestial hierarchies, may succeed in making himself as such superior in one sense to any hierarchy or class or even combinations of them. When man has reached the 17th step, he has begun to manifest in his body that which was meant by the word made flesh. Having reached this definite point in evolution, the word, just as when uttered over the chaotic darkness of this planet, which has gone on incessantly vibrating through all the kingdoms, creating, perversing, and destroying, has reached man, has been made flesh in him and differentiated into consecutive thought, which can be expressed in words. And because he has reached this point where his intellect has become a foundation, rock upon which he can build a definite structure of thought, at this point, it may be called the foundation of excellence, for now he knows because he has experienced and proved. He has chosen of his own free will to be a creator of harmony 
rather than permit his intellectual powers to build up false structures destined to fall and bury him in their ruins. In the lower kingdoms, God spake the word, and they made, and they were made. Hence, had to obey blindly that evolutionary impulse, but man being made in God's image must speak the word for himself and see that all his bodies, faculties, and kingdoms obey it. He now knows that he alone is the ruler of his world and has chosen to work with those great powers with whom he has con consciously allied himself. He has turned away from the egoistic and ignorant worship of his own intellect and having learned its power, when wrongfully used, has impressed all the kingdoms below him with antagonism, disease, and death by the vibrations of his thoughts and speech, he now consciously impresses all the lower kingdoms for good. Moreover, this has now come to be recognized by him as a duty he owes to the lower kingdoms because he made man to rule over them. In short, man at this step must begin to manifest the power of the word to rule the lower kingdoms. The creative word flows like a life stream, the vibrations of which are guided and directed by conscious intelligence. For all the powers of nature are expressed of the word of God. All things are obeying in mystic language, the rhythmic law of the creative word. This word is composed of four syllables, sound, number, color, and form. Everything in nature has its voice, which speaks in tones so positive it cannot mislead one who has learned its language only when creation has reached man who being the microcosm has within him his own body all the elements found in the macrocosm can the word be reproduced through spoken language hence when man has reached 17 he takes his place as a co-worker with these conscious intelligences which has been called the army of the voice all working in harmony, each obeying the will of God and coordinating co as a mighty army to bring to perfection through evolution all things that are upon this planet. The army of the voice penetrates all the hierarchies. In fact, it is the deep mystery of sound, vibration, the second syllable of the creative word. Thus, while man alone, all creatures have the power to use his voice to translate thought into articulate words. Nevertheless, this mighty army of sound runs through all the kingdoms. Day until day uttereth speech, and night unto night shrewdeth knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Everything has a voice and a rate of vibration, for there are sounds both above and below man's power to hear, Man, by his use of words and by the modulations of the tones of his voice, literally sends out sound waves, which go on and on, it never-ending vibrations, either lending to the inarticulate sounds of creation the power to raise the vibration of their keynote, hence evolve a little more harmoniously with the mighty keynote of the divine harmony sound by the ruler of their hierarchy or he helps to make the sounds more inharmonious and destructive. And as a whole object of evolution is to evolve and redeem every atom of this planet, and man will never complete his task until he has found himself the divine harmony of the hierarchy to which he belongs. He must then impress the, this harmonious force of love and perfection on everything within his environment, being with his own body, but including every kingdom of animal, plant, mineral, or particle of matter that he can touch by his thought waves. Thus, 17 is the fullest sense is one, God, and seven, perfection. And man blended to help on eight, the evolution of the planet. Number one is the sun in its positive aspect, and in number seven, the moon, while number eight, seven, one plus seven equals eight is Saturn, the great initiator. Number one is related to the creative thought and number seven to feeling, especially the feeling of the mother love, that which gives it of itself to bring forth while number eight relates to justice.
Polyanus calls number 17 the eighth hour and names it the star of the Magi, designating it as the astral virtues of the elements of seed of every kind. The discipline reaching this eighth hour has, according to Apollyanus, ended his task <clears throat> or has reached the region of the principle and life becomes a fear. He has gained his power in all further outward advance, will belong to a future world period, for if at this step he uses the power, which is the guardian of his own soul's travail, to become a co-worker with the great planetary deities to help on the evolution of the planet, he will go in the work advancing inwardly and at each new day of the planetary existence will help to form the earth for a more advanced obtainment until ultimately he will be absorbed in the glorious splendor of the central sun and go no more out therefrom. Many advanced souls are already responding to this cosmic urge to the redemption and perfection in their efforts to improve the plants and animals man uses for food, purifying them from disease and uplifting them in the scale of evolution. This is a, nece a necessary preparation for the coming six sub-race children. That's us. For they will be so sensitive to inharmony, impurity, disease, that if such a child were given an apple with a worm in it, he would immediately take on the conditions which the worm manifests, hence it would be poisoned by its emanations if he ate the apple, even if all traces of the worms have been carefully cut out. Therefore, there must be new and finer kinds of food developed. We are here, guys. Here we are. Well, each of these hours takes but a few words to express each of them may take years centuries and often life lives to obtain how few they w were be who even pass the first step or according to apollyanus hold the vigil of the first hour but let no one despair for nothing is lost that which we conquer today be it ever so little will never assail us again. To begin, if we be in earnest, we have to take the Sphinx as our emblem and study well its lessons, seeking for spiritual, moral, and intellectual supremacy, looking for no miraculous test, but content to take the test as well as the task of our daily life. And out of the material and the environment in which we find ourselves, Build in cell by cell the new perfected spiritual body, which shall someday be clothed in the glorious splendor of the Holy Ghost. We're going to go into the 17th letter. But I am not 100% sure how to pronounce this in Hebrew. I'm going to do my best. It's pay. Might be pay. Might be pay. It's what, what's resonating with me. And I'm sorry, I'm not trying to butcher Hebrew. Quote, he produced pay and referred it to the power. He crowned it, combined it, and formed it with Mercury in the universe the fifth day of the week and left ear of man, Sefer Yitzraya. I read that book, so you should go back and find that. The 17th letter of the Hebrew alphabet is Pei, double letter, which corresponds astronomically to the planet Mercury, whose double qualities are power and servitude. Mercury is called the messenger of the gods and is the planet of thought, permanently in its creative aspect. For like Mercury, thought is the messenger of the gods, yet it can sink low or climb high and travel faster than the wind. Mercury is also the messenger of man's thoughts to the kingdom below him. The Greeks re represented the god Mercury as a beautiful youth in the attitude of flight, poised on one foot, while Boreas, Borealis, or Boreas, is bowing him out of his mouth. I know I'm not pronouncing that properly, so I do apologize again. 
He has wings on his head, symbolizing the power of thought to lift the intellect above the earth, to fly up to the heaven and carry man's aspirations to the gods. But he also has wings on his heels, indicating the exceedingly swiftness of thought to put a girdle round the world, also to carry man's thoughts over all the earth that man's impress shall be stamped on all the kingdom below him. Hence, just as the letter P has its hard and soft sound, Mercury or the thoughts of man become either a clothing of righteousness or a cloak of darkness, effectively hiding from him the higher divine understanding. Alas, for Mercury, if the wings upon his heels are permitted to grow over large, while those upon his head atrophy. The letter P is called the paternal letter, and it is formed is very suggestive, for it is made up of a circle with a straight line, the one or the one life, descending from the circle. In this case, the circle while presenting the same meaning as the circle, has the added meaning of a head or a brain. Hence, we might say that in this letter, it is the brain of the Divine Father in Heaven, a cipher from an earthly standpoint, because unknown pouring upon humanity through the straight line, all the inscrutable wisdom contained in the circle. As we have said elsewhere, the four Ps, perception, promptness, perseverance and perfection form the four corners of the mental foundation stone. Let us then briefly consider the geometrical design of the letter P. Originally, it was made of a circle symbolizing a sphere of manifestation lifted a little above the earth. In this case, we will call the sphere the mental world or the sphere of conception, while our mentality is capable of entering, grasping and cognizing. From the circle there reaches down to earth a particular line or pedestal upon which it rests. In other words, the letter P is a modification of a circle resting upon the top or of a fixed perpendicular line. This line represents unity or one. It also represents the letter I, that, re that conception of I amness, which we must gain by reaching up in the mental world Long er, we are ready to lay out mental foundation stone and prepare the spiritual illumination until we have carved this fourfold stone and placed it upon its pedestal in the mental world. We have no sure foundation of knowledge upon which to stand or build. First, we must have perception. We speak of using our powers of sight upon the psychic plane and we call it clairvoyance. But it is not a new sense, nor is it a perception. It is but the same use of sight in the psychic world. Perception is something quite different from sight. It belongs to the mental world, for no matter how much we see, either physically, clairvoyantly, or even spiritually, unless we mentally perceive sight brings to our consciousness no real meaning or lesson. Perception is the power to understand, the mental desire to grasp, and comprehend something which we know exists, something which we perceive is necessary, but which we have not yet obtained. A prime factor is perception is a attention. We must give attention to the laws of manifestation in the higher realms. If we would perceive and understand the realities of life, the necessity of laying our foundation stone and proceeding with the great work. When we have awakened our powers of perception, powers which not only stir our hearts and fill our lives, but which our reason has convinced us are necessary to bring forth and make tangible our ideals, then we must begin work upon the next corner of our stone, promptness. Promptness means to do at once whatever you perceive should be done, even little things. Let nothing come between you and that thing or duty your perception has told you is your next step. This corner is the life of the novice. Often takes many years to carve. So hard is it to overcome habits of delect. Delic Can't get that word out. Sorry, guys. We are so prone even when building our spiritual temple to neglect this corner to try to lay our mental stone 
and leave this corner improperly squared and fitted. Yet if we do so, our structure will fall or be weak that we will have to come back and rebuild it later. Therefore, build it while you may, strong and square and perfect. Never be so busy, even with that which you consider important, that you cannot promptly obey the perception which your soul has given to your intellect. If you perceive a duty to be done, do it now, even if you have to stop something you prefer to do. There is nothing that disturbs your mental and psychic poise, whether in your studies, your business, or other affairs of life, as to feel that there is something hanging over you, something little thing that you should have done, but which you have neglected or put off. Such an unfulfilled duty becomes a pressure or an unrecognized source of irritation in your mental and psychic life, which hampers your perfect accomplishment of other duties through your lack of promptness the opportunity to gain and end your desire often slips from you you forget or some trifling matter of personal inconvenience delays you and later you find that your project has failed because you have neglected to obey promptly the perception of truth given to you for instance you perceive the advantages of studying the teachings of the order in company with those whose hearts respond to the same great ideals, the advantage of coming into the currents of spiritual force forever flowing from its inner center, currents which, who's, which those who study together focus upon themselves. You perceive all this, but some trifling excuse prevents you from acting upon it. You are too tired, you had company, it was too cold or too hot too wet or too windy and you wish to be excused you are just like the guests bidden to the feast of which jesus speaks they all with one consent begin to make excuse the first said unto him i have brought to a piece of ground and i must need i must needs go and see it i pray they have me excused and another said, I have brought five yoke of oxen, and I go to prove them. I pay thee, have me excused. And another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. Human nature is still the same. How many fail to fulfill their promises or follow their perception of duty, yet find time for more congenial tasks? Have you no coincidence in the love and power of the great master of wisdom to protect and sustain you when you would study their teachings or be about their business. If you have, then prove it. Follow the perception. Make the effort. Every positive stand you take builds character, increases your strength, lifts you out of your negative state, gives you the power to conquer your weakness, and tends to make promptness, courage, resolution, and trust habits which will replace the negative habit of making excuses. Therefore, we declare unto you that after perception comes promptness of action. Follow up every perception by prompt execution. Never stop to argue with the soul speaks. Never put off duty until you have more time. You have all the time there is. Do it now. The next corner of the stone you must carve is perseverance. In the journey of the soul, the great law urges everyone to perfect himself if through lack of perception and promptness we lag behind how difficult to persevere i threw lack of promptness to grow negative and lose sorry blank page interest our path does not look half so inviting our duty half so compelling the master's voice grows fainter and fainter for we are too far away from him to hear it distinctively. His presence does not seem half so tangible, so loving or desirable, nor his blessings so necessary to our lives. We find a thousand reasons to lag behind, to relax our perseverance. We say to ourselves, I did so wish to perceive and learn and progress. I have studied and obtained meetings, yet here I am no more the master of myself in my life today than I was a year ago. Of course we are not. We may even be less a master because we have permitted negative forces to enter in and hold us back. 
We have not promptly obeyed. We have not determinately and doggedly persevered. Therefore, our perception becomes fainter in flashes of intuition and the glory of realization grow further and further away and apart. We lag behind. Perseverance is absolutely necessary to complete the fourfold foundation stone in our mental world. Until we have perception of the path and its goal, we will never start out. If we are not pumped and persevering in per putting our perception into execution, it will fade away. We will forget or become negative and will never carve the last cornerstone perfection. Our stone will not be four square. Its corners will not be laid and it will not be ready to build upon. It will not fit in with the other stones that are being laid. Hence, then, the master builder comes to inspect our stone, it will be rejected, for it has not marked of the master perfection upon it. Balance up then the corners and find that which is perfect in mental world. Perfection is obtainable to him who perceives, who is pumped, and who perseveres. The 17th tarot card, the star. The 17th card of the tarot is called the star. It is pictured as a nude young girl pouring upon the ground water from two vases. The water which she pours from the vases is the symbol of the water of life, the universal solvent. The two vases are errors, symbolize the positive and negative vessels through which the universal life is expressed in man and women. It is the symbol, the same symbol we find in the 14th card where the virgin poured the water of life from one vessel to another. But here she pours it upon the earth, symbolizing that man must now consciously pour forth this life principle to the lower kingdoms through the power of thought, either unexpressed or expressed through sound speech, that all the earth may bring forth in harmony. When man has reached this point, it is the spiritual unfoldment of his aura, his becoming illumined and brilliant that it is seen by the elements of all the kingdoms as a brilliant star which they gladly follow. In short, he has become a star or a light bearer to the lower kingdoms. And that ends number 17. Next, we're going to tackle 18. And again, I do apologize that I don't do my readings as frequently or as often and it's spontaneous now because of the weather, not having AC, my house exploding with all kinds of shit all over the place. It's a lot of work and it's taking me away from doing this, but my choices are very limited at this point and any and all support will help me get there faster. So I'd appreciate it. All the links will be down below. Please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe. And again, we all need to embody that last part, the, the four Ps, because we are lacking as a humanity, many of those things. And it's by design that we lack, by design. But it's up to us to start putting forth effort to doing the little things that can help others that then spread. And the more people who pick up on the good deeds of others, the more people start acting on those good deeds and the more people that put motion and action into what they're doing, more people will be coming abundant. And again, abundance doesn't necessarily mean monetary. It means that they are abundant in something. We need to spread this more and out. No one should be hungry. No one in this day and age, unless chosen that that's what they wanted, 
should have to go through anything that a lot of us are going through right now. It's making us creative and it's pulling us out of some kind of soul growth that we need to extend and excel at. But at the same time, that doesn't mean that people should just sit back and, and hold the popcorn and wait and listen to everybody spew stuff and do nothing at the same time. There's always a way you can help somebody. It doesn't need to be financially. We need to start putting more action into motion so that we can have better causes that give greater effects that push all of us up, not down. And a lot of people are starting to push on the lower end. They're deceiving. They're in the negative side of that pendulum. Where do you fall? We need to do better. And of course, it's all, again, by design. Ooh, Thor. It is raining. No wonder why my neck is killing me. And it was super humid before. I'm sending each and every one of you love and light. I hope all of you have an amazing rest of the week. And I hope to be doing more throughout the week. Um, going to try to get some Oracle tomorrow done. We'll see. Depends how I feel. Till next time. See you on the next one. Bye, guys.